Thank you, Antoine. Um, nice to meet everybody here. My name is Rob McGrath. I'm actually a PM here at Jump Cloud. I'm on specifically on the MSP product team, and I'm here to show you guys uh, how a password manager would help you guys at your MSP. So, I'm going to get that screen shared over here. So, um, what you're seeing here now is the desktop app on Windows. Now, this is cross platform uh, compatible, so it does work on Mac OS and Linux. Uh, the main difference is between all of them, it's going to be almost identical experience across all of them, with the exception of biometric authentication. So if you're on a Mac, it's going to use Touch ID, and on Windows, it's going to use Windows Hello. So what you're looking at here is one part, which is the desktop app. Um, this is store, stored locally. It's uh, very important to have on these devices to be able to store your data locally and use it for the browser extension. Later on, I'm going to show you the browser extension, but do know that there is a mobile app as well for Android and iOS and iPadOS. So you'll be able to have this on multiple devices wherever you may find yourself doing work. So this desktop app um, is broken into three different sections. So this left pane over here is the really the navigation pane. This helps you get around to the different parts of the types of data that you would store inside of here. So clearly the most important part would be your passwords. This middle pane over here is an actual list of items. So I can see passwords and the items that have been shared with me, either locally stored by myself or shared with me via a, a shared folder. And this right pane over here shows the actual content of that item. Um, you have the option to save passwords. I can save credit cards as well. So I can use this for autofill or if I don't wanna you know, trust the intern or the, the new guy on the help desk to you know, go beyond just purchasing the one thing I gave him the credit card for, I can uniquely share it with him here. He can use it in a limited fashion and I can revoke access as well. Um, we also do have a secure notes section. Now this is not like a documentation platform by any means, but this is really a nice place to kind of dump those random pieces of text that don't, uh, you don't want them sitting in a Word document just forever on your desktop. We also don't want to put it in the cloud somewhere. This is a nice kind of in-between. I personally would use this for things like answers to security questions that you always have to set up, uh, especially those like uh, different accounts that you have to have as recovery options. Um, you can do this and share this with your team. Um, another option is for like license keys, install scripts, whatever else you want to dump here. I like to use this for that kind of random stuff. Um, this is also, uh, this also does have a baked in to a, a TOTP 2FA authenticator. So much like something like a Google Authenticator, you can copy and paste that secret. You can even attach it to a password. So for instance, if this one actually does have 2FA, but let's say like this one did, like I want to add 2FA here, you can simply do this, type in a secret, and once that's actually attached to it, forever that password and that item uh, and that code will be saved together. So anybody who has access, either myself or an additional user, they'll have access to the TOTP code as well, which is a boon. I've, I've worked in an MSP before. I know the general experience of yelling down the hallway for whoever has the authenticator or the phone number to receive the text for whatever account. This is a lot better and a lot less awkward and more COVID friendly uh, to be able to do this uh, remotely. Wherever they have access to their apps, they're able to pull up the TOTP code as well. And it does also autofill, which we'll show that with the browser extension demo. So these codes, as you can see, are cycling. So it is standard TOTP. Um, we also allow you to save things like ID cards, passports, insurance information, whatever else. This is particularly handy for you not to have to go down your wallet or whatever. If you don't want to, again, give some random person in your office the driver's license, but let's say somebody's arranging travel or something like that, plenty of context to need that kind of information. This is a nice way to securely share that. And identities, really for things like address autofill, this helps you uh, easily share billing or shipping addresses and kind of do this on the fly. Um, at all of those things I showed you now, um, they are capable of being either stored personally, which nobody else except for the user or like whoever is the person using this, uh, this app in particular, nobody else has visibility into those. However, if it is obviously with a password manager, one of the biggest features is sharing this with the rest of your team in a secure way. All these items are personal, but if, if I wanted to save this and share this with like my accounting department, for instance, I have the capability of adding items uniquely to this folder and granting access to that folder. So for instance, I have been set to being a folder man, like I can set this to be either folder manager, items manager, or folder member. Folder manager would be something like almost like a local admin for this folder. So they can add users, remove users, add, remove, or update, delete, um, sorry, update items inside this folder. And a folder member really is only able to get um, the password shared with them. I'm going to see if I can demo myself on my other device over here. And basically, those uh, when they when you're a folder member, you can only use the password with autofill. So that means they can't reveal the password to themselves. They can't copy it. They can't paste it. They can't export. 
and they really just are able to um, only use it in the context of a browser extension. And with that, sorry, <laughs> losing my voice today, sorry. And um, with, the, with all that, you can also have this available on multiple devices. As Antoine had alluded to before, you can have another laptop, you can have a mobile device. All these apps would be able to sync where the data is stored locally. It'll do a peer-to-peer -peer connection between the devices. But all this is saying, this, this data is all stored locally, and it's all fine and dandy for the desktop app, but clearly the most important feature for most people will be using the browser extension. So what I'm showing you here is available in all the major browsers, Firefox, all the Chromium versions, and also Safari when the desktop app comes out for general availability. So when I come in, the browser extension will be paired to my desktop app. It's gonna show the same data as my desktop app as well, but it'll also have <clears throat> the uh, password generator available so I can pull up a password and create a password on the fly. I can also filter by folders. So if I have my personal folders or accounting options, whatever else, I'll be able to use those in autofill fashion for all the various accounts I have. Um, with these options, I can even go in and pull up the item right here. And let's say, for instance, I wanna log into my Squarespace account. There's built-in search. I can launch directly from here. And the username and password field has been detected automatically. Let me use that autofill dropped in, and there I am. Now, if that password was only shared with me and I was not an admin or anything like that, that is the experience that an end user would have if they only have uh, folder member access. It just blacks out the password, drops it in, and they never see it. Now, obviously, one of the most important features I have would be something like a TOTB code associated with it. For instance, like if I'm going to use a Monday.com account, oftentimes you guys, especially as admins, will have shared accounts amongst your team or your customers will have shared accounts. And they what they would want to do is to have that super powerful shared account, but you want to protect it with TOTP or 2FA. Problem is that's usually very painful. So a lot of times 2FA is not even enabled on these accounts. But in this context, you saw it autofilled, had a little window in the top right corner to let me copy and paste it if I needed to. But it was a very seamless, uh, just autofill kind of uh, behavior with that. And oftentimes, especially when you're showing anything to MSPs, a very common question is, what about Office 365? We are compatible with Office 365 logins, especially those pesky global admin accounts you have to log into. And in this context, you can log in, click sign in. Thank goodness Microsoft Pages take forever to load. So I can pull this up, it drops in the username. You'll also notice that the, the uh, domain had changed. So I can actually have multiple domains, including portal.azure.com. Uh, basically, it autofilled the username, password, 2FA, and log2n, and Office uh, changed domains three times during that process. So what Rob was showing us is the ability to add multiple URLs to an item so that the item gets autofilled and like you're able to traverse these different domains and authenticate successfully without having the friction of needing to manually do anything. Okay, so let's say that I want to now log into a new account here. And I don't have it stored in the password manager. First of all, that's how I un unlock the password manager. I got a fingerprint prompt now. I just put it in and it's just showing me my different accounts. I am uh, I have multiple accounts here as an admin. I can use the input field as a filter. So if I type staging, for example, it's gonna filter by the accounts that have changing is staging. I can use my keyboard to go down this list and hit enter to have it autofilled. All of this is pretty seamless. If you wanna hide this for any reason, you can just click on the password manager icon here and that's it. Doesn't show up anymore. The way to get it to show back again is to click again on this. But let's say that there's an account that I don't have uh, stored in there and I wanna add it. So when I type the password manually, it's gonna say add to jump cloud. That's how users save their passwords. Click on that, it's gonna show you the account. Uh, it's gonna ask you to review the item. You pick which folder you want to add it to. By default, set the personal folder, and that you hit save, and that's done. If you pick a shared folder, then the item gets automatically shared with different users. Now, in case you're, if you're uh, coming in from a different password manager, then we have an import capability. You launch our importer, hit next, pick which password manager you're coming from. And these password managers tend to export a file, a CSV file or a file branded in their own uh, like specific extension. But then you pick the password manager, drop that file in, and then it seamlessly imports all of the credentials uh, into the vault. So the idea is that the, it's a password manager that you can deploy internally within your own organization through the child company that you're using uh, internally. 
uh, to manage your own passwords, your admin IT accounts. So you can share passwords, you can autofills, you can add passwords manually. There's even a mini version of the password manager that can autofill credentials in remote desktop sessions and in uh, native desktop applications. It's also a password manager that you can deploy to your customers by going into their child companies in Jump Cloud, activating a session, and then inviting the users to join through user groups. That's going to invite them to join the password manager. They sign in user using their Jump Cloud email address and activates their password manager on their account. You can manage all of that from the admin console. And uh, yeah, you get basically full visibility and control over what's going on. With that, let's go back to the presentation. So this password manager or the Jump Cloud password manager for MSPs is currently in early access. It will be released towards the end of October for general availability. If you are an existing uh, partner and are interested in trying it out, starting to deploy it internally or to your customers, that's definitely possible. Reach out to your uh, account manager if you know who that is. If you don't know who that is, email us at pwm at jumpcloud.com. That's pwm like password manager at jumpcloud.com. If you're a new partner who's interested to learn more about Jump Cloud and specifically about Jump Cloud password manager, just sign up at jumpcloud.com slash sign up and go through the process and you're going to be all set uh, through that pass. So again, if you're interested in early access, uh, let us know. We're going to show a poll on the screen now uh, that's going to allow you to indicate whether you're interested or not. If you select that you're potentially interested, we'll make sure to follow up with you so you don't have to reach out to us and, uh, and let us know. It's just the easiest way for us, uh, for you to show in interest and have someone from our end reach out to set you up with a with a demo account. Please subscribe and check out more content from us.